Okay, welcome back to DB2 and our discussion of the B plus tree structure in PostgreSQL and in relational database systems in general. Now that we have looked at the internals of the leaf nodes and the inner nodes and also a bit at the root node of our B plus trees, let's view B plus tree indexes from the viewpoint of the query engine, from the viewpoint of query execution. How can we benefit from the presence of such B plus trees when it comes to the speedy evaluation of queries, particularly those queries that specify predicates on the index columns, of course. Okay, um, the B plus tree is a really versatile index structure and can support a wide range of predicates, a wider range of predicates than, for example, hash-based indexes, which are only specialists in supporting equality predicates. Okay, um, these are, of course, very prominent predicates. And uh, if A is a primary key, then a comparison with some other comparison value called low here would be something that you find very often in queries. But what you will also find are so-called range predicates or range queries, which are characterized by predicates like this. So uh, a range predicate would look for all rows whose A value lies between two borders of a given interval. So this, of course, don't have to be inclusive borders. They could be exclusive borders, but we are talking about the low and high borders of specific interval. We will find a myriad of queries which have to use these so-called range predicates. The range ranges from low to high. There are, of course, uh, special range predicates, the so-called half open ranges, which only specify a lower or only an upper bound. So you can imagine that the uh, the higher bound in this particular case is just the positive infinity or that the lower bound would be negative infinity in this case. All of these are actually special cases of range predicates. This could be a range in which the low and the high uh, borders just agree on the value low. All right. So all of these predicates, all of these uh, all of these uh, query classes could be supported efficiently by a B plus tree. And the interface that the query engine, the query executor uses to these B plus trees, we've already seen it actually, it's the so-called index scan, which is a replacement for the sequential scan. The sequential scan would only visit the heap file and would scan and evaluate all rows inside that heap file. The index scan would, of course, be evaluated over the index instead and uh, navigate the index structure. And uh, once it has leaf, and once it has reached the leaf sequence set of that index structure, it would then transition to an access to the actual heap file records inside the heap file for our table T. All right. To guide, to guide the search inside such an uh, index structure. The index scan is required to have an index condition, which would be just one of these conditions, one of one of these predicate expressions that we've seen above here. All right. So if this is the the index condition that is supplied in in a query, the index scan would use the lower range, the low value, to guide its search through the uh, to the index structure. We would enter the search tree at the root and we would look for key values of value low. We would use that value to guide our binary search inside the inner nodes until we reach the leave nodes uh, where we would use the low value to search among the index entries um, and uh, use binary search to indicate uh, locate the low value whose read pointer we would then follow into the actual file. I've brought a schematic to show just this. All right. Okay, so indeed, both structures are uh, participating in this operation, the index file and all of its pages that are in arranged in the form of a search tree. And of course, the heap file itself, because the last step of the relation will require us, us to access the records inside the heap file itself to um, retrieve all the attributes there. We won't find all of the attributes inside this B plus tree here. Retrieve the actual rows and return these as the actual query result. Both structures are involved here. 
All right. So um, if that is our condition, our index condition, or our search predicate, as we've just specified on the previous slide, we would use the low value to guide our search through the index. We would enter the index at the B plus tree root page and then use the low key value to guide ourselves using binary search inside the inner nodes to descend through the B tree, to descend further, to descend further until we reach the leaf level, the sequence set level of the B plus tree. All right, we would hit one particular page let me focus there one particular page in the in the sequence set and we can expect to find the first few hits the first few records whose a value is actually uh, equal to low or even larger than low we would expect to find the first few entries here at this sequence set uh, page okay we would use the rids that we find there on this page to dereference them and follow them into the heap file to locate the actual wanted rocket, uh, record, retrieve it, and add it to the query result. But there might be more. There might be more hits. There might be more target records that we need to retrieve from the heap file. So what we would do now is we would scan the sequence set from left to right, from left to right, checking that the key values in the index entries in these sequence set pages, that the key values are still less than high or at, at most high and do not exceed high. As long as we find key values during this scan that fulfill that condition, we would dereference the read pointers, would switch over to the heap file and uh, extract the record from there, add it to the result. Return through to our sequence set scan until we reach a page in the sequence set, a leaf node of the B plus tree, in which the entries finally exceed the high value. We would then stop our dereference march uh, our, uh, and our dereference process into the heap file. We would end our traversal of the sequence set because we can be sure that these entries in the sequence set to the right here, they won't ever contain values that will fit into the query range again. Recall that the uh, entries in the sequence set are ordered. Once we exceed the high range or the high border rather, uh, we would we will never find any more success entries here uh, to the right of that high border. We could as well stop our sequential sequence set at this particular point. Okay, so again, index structure as well as heap file are participating in this process. Of course, we are hoping that we don't have to follow too many pointers from the sequence set scan down to the heap file. Access the heap file there and then return our scan here in the, or continue our scan in the sequence set. Uh, each such access to the heap file, of course, costs. Each such access costs, and we really hope that there is not too many of these accesses. I will come back to this trade of. Uh, in a minute when we switch over to the uh, PostgreSQL uh, terminal. All right, that would be an index scan. Hunt for the low key value, find its first occurrence at the beginning here, uh, follow the sequence set until you find the high border value, then end the, uh, the sequence set scan because nothing else is to be found here. Okay. Uh, when you traverse down the inner nodes inside this B plus tree, what you are performing is really a vanilla search in a, in a search tree, in this case, an n search tree. Uh, but there's really not much to say about that. That's really the vanilla uh, descent into an n search tree structure. In this case, n would be this 2O here, or maximum fan out. No more entries could be found in an inner node and no more pointers could be pointing out of that inner node in two subordinate search trees. But uh, a really very really vanilla recursive routine could be used to guide that search using the separator values that are found in the inner nodes. So assume that we are indeed on the search for this low value here, just like we explained on the two previous slides. Okay. Our search would enter the tree at the root node. So we would call this auxiliary function, indicating that we are on the hunt for the low value, and we would start at this particular page at the root page. This call would lead us to this auxiliary routine. 
okay, uh, this routine searches this node, this node of the B plus tree for a particular entry. And uh, we would be sure that we have found the correct leave node from which we can then uh, start our sequential scan through the sequence set if that node is indeed already a leaf. So if node is already a leaf node, then our search of the tree structure has come to an end. We could start the sequence set scan. If this is not a node yet, uh, not a leaf net, I'm sorry about that. If it is not a leaf net uh, yet, then we are at an inner node. Inside the inner node, we would inspect the low value that we are searching for and would then uh, compare it with the separators the separators found inside the inner node these are the comparisons with the separators if we are indeed looking for a value that is even less than the first separator stored in such an inner node then we would follow the pointer to the leftmost subordinate tree which is pointed to by p0 otherwise we would continue our binary search until we find two separators that include our 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 uh, our search value low here and we would then of course follow the appropriate pi pointer to the subordinate search tree or in the case that our low value is even larger than the largest key that has been stored as inside the inner node then we would follow the pointer to the very right most subordinate search tree that is pointed to from this inner node but as you can see this is really just a vanilla tree search in an ordered uh, search tree. All right. Great. So um, I, I would like to come back to this observation that indeed both structures, the B plus T structure as well as the heap file structure is involved in the such an index scan. So let's not forget about that. And uh, there is a cutoff, there is a trade-off that has to be made because uh, traversing or crossing this border, crossing this border, reaching down into the heap file to extract the wanted records is something that uh, is rather costly. This is an index ex or a page access into the heap file. Very well, the, we may find that this particular page of the heap file is not already present in the buffer. So it will indeed uh, occur or it could incur physical I.O. Uh, searching this B plus tree is efficient, but it still involves some effort. We need to load the pages of the B plus tree. We need to inspect the pages. We need to follow down that path and load more B plus tree pages. So there is some effort involved here. There's really some tra trade off to be had. Shall we really invest in this B plus tree descent to then selectively only access a few pages of this heap file or is all the effort not worth it? Because we would find so many pointers, so many pointers from the from the sequence set down to the heap file because the sequence set that we have to scan is probably, or the subset of the sequence set that we have to scan is really wide. If this is really wide and we have to follow a lot of pointers, then, well, we have to access many of these heap file pages anyway. Maybe it's then best to really start with a sequential scan of the heap file pages uh, of the heap file pages and then disregard the B plus tree altogether. At one particular point, if the if the interval between low and high is just too large, if the subset of the sequence set that is relevant for our search is just too large, then it's probably best to not consider the B plus tree at all. And uh, to conclude this video, I would like to show that this trait of this these considerations are actually built into PostgreSQL. PostgreSQL. All right, so and to do that, uh, let me switch over here to the editor again. Uh, to do that, I will do the following. I will, of course, f uh, run queries over our index table and I will use a particular predicate. This is the predicate I'm using i.a. i.a is one of the index columns or is the index column in our in our B plus tree. I will compare i.a with this uh, literal value. If you recall, I.A uh, ascends from 1 through 1 million. This is a rather picky and selective predicate. So almost all of the rows will not qualify regarding this predicate. Only 1,000 or 999 rows will indeed qualify regarding this predicate. This is a rather small fraction of rows. And we expect PostgreSQL to decide that, hey, it's indeed worth to uh, traverse the B plus tree, which will us 
which will lead us to those pages in a sequence set in the leaf level of the plus tree that will directly lead us to the hits, to the batching rows inside the index table. All right. If we change that predicate and uh, let that literal value grow here to 500,000 already, then it might not be so clear already. So half of the pages indeed qualify and the width of the sequence set part that has to be scanned is actually already half of the sequence set in for the in um, uh, if we choose this uh, 500,000 value as comparison value. It gets even worse if we enlarge this value even more. And at one point we will see that PostgreSQL decides, okay, there are so many hits. The sequence set part that has to be scanned is so wide, it's just not worth the effort of, uh, of uh, uh, visiting the B plus tree here. Let's do a sequential scan over the index file because too many pages qualify anyway. All right. Uh, and that's actually a very good decision to make. It's a very good decision to make because if I then force the system to use index scan, I do that by disabling the sequential scan. Okay, so I force the system to use the B plus tree index scan. If I do that, then this query, if I repeat it at this particular point, if I do that, then this query will be forced to use the index scan even though almost all of the pages uh, are included in the sequ sequence set scan uh, in, in our B plus tree visit. And this is really inefficient. This is really inefficient. We don't gain much by visiting the plus tree. We could as well just perform the sequential scan over the table file only. All right. I'm telling you all of this uh, because I will now switch over to the terminal in which I have prepared this experiment. This is a performance uh, uh, and, and time uh, uh, sensitive experiment, as you can expect. And uh, if I would run this experiment with all the video equipment and uh, video recording uh, running in, then I would measure something, but not the real uh, performance of the database system. So I have pre recorded this experiment and uh, I will perform just the three queries and we will look at how the system reacts, whether it will be using index scan or sequential scan, and I hope you can see the behavior that I just described to you. Okay, so here we go. Let's run the query the first time with the very picky selective predicate. And you can see, indeed, it's using the sequen index scan. The index scan, the system expected only a few rows to be qualifying here. All right. Now, let's rerun this thing with a uh, less picky predicates, still using the index scan, uh, all right, but uh, now let's switch to a less picky predicate. And what we see is, indeed, we have switched over to sequential scan. The system decided that the B3 visit is not worth it. It will maybe lead to even more effort than only a sequential scan. I will now forbid that sequential scan here. As you can see, I force the system to use the index scan. I will just repeat that query here. 310 milliseconds for the sequential scan, 374 milliseconds for the index scan. That's a real disappointment at this particular point. So forcing the system to use the index scan is a bad idea in this case. If the predicate is not really picky, not selective, then we don't gain much by using uh, by using the B plus tree. All right. Okay. So. Uh, Experiment has ended. You see, I've I've uh, reset the enable sequential scan configuration parameter so that in the future I will use sequential scan when it appears to be uh, profitable. All right. So so much for that. That's the experiment I wanted you to show. So index scan is cool, but uh, not in all cases. Only if the predicate is selective and picky enough then index scan can really make a big difference here. Okay, so much for that. Really much more to say about uh, query relation using indexes and so on. Uh, looking forward to discuss this with you.